What is soil texture? Texture is a word that has a lot of meanings in common usage, but in soil it's very specific. And a lot of times people misuse the word, so we need to define it to try and understand what soil texture is. So what is it? The next question that we need in order to answer that question is going to be, well, what is sand? And then after that, what is silt? What is clay? Loam is a word you've probably heard. It's another word that's very often misused. And then color. Does color have anything to do with soil? And the answer might surprise you because many of you have heard of red clays. And then the next question is, what does organic matter have to do with soil texture? That's another one that might surprise some of you because you may have heard that uh, loams are organic soils. So what is soil texture? Again, it's a very specific definition in soil science. It's the relative proportion of sand, silt, and clay. So what is sand? These are the larger particles of soil that we consider soil. So anything larger than two millimeters, it's about a tenth of an inch, is a gravel or a cobble or a stone. And sands go down to 0.05 millimeters. You can see those with your eyes if you've got good eyesight. Then they're gritty and rough when you feel them, when you touch them. Silts are the intermediate sized particles. You can see the biggest ones with your eyes if you've got good eyesight and down to the smallest ones, it's impossible for you to see without a microscope. Then these feel smooth, kind of like baby powder or maybe powdered sugar. I'm gonna read. Then clays are the super tiniest particles. You can't see those with your eye. You have to have a really strong microscope and for the very smallest ones, even uh, an electron microscope to be able to see those. These are the ones that make a soil feel plastic and moldable like Play-Doh. So again, what is soil texture? It is the relative proportion of sand, silt, and clay. Now we have a definition. Soil texture is the relative proportion of sand and silt and clay. So you see around this triangle, we see the words clay and silt and sand. So we need to get the definition of those again. And remember, those are particle sizes. Sands are the biggest particles. And, you, and silts are the intermediate sized particles and then clays are the super tiniest particles. So that's our definition of soil texture. But we also have another word that is used in referencing soil texture. Now we know the, the sizes and we know the definition. So now we need this other word, the soil texture class, because you'll notice on this triangle that at the top you have the word clay and on the side, left side, you have the word percent clay. On the right hand side, you have the word percent silt and down in the bottom right corner, you have silt. And across the bottom, you have sand. And in the left corner, bottom left corner, you have sand. So we need to understand there's a distinction between the size themselves, the sizes of the particles themselves, and this texture triangle, which is going to be the relative proportion, the specific mixture of sands and silts and clays. Now you'll notice that at the top of the triangle, we have three texture classes that end in the word clay. So there's the clay itself, more than 40% uh, clay. And then you have a smooth or silty clay on the, on the right hand side and a sandy clay on the left hand side three clay texture classes. There's three clay loam texture classes that cut through the middle here. The clay loam, and then if it's got a little more sand, a sandy clay loam or more silt, silty clay loam. We then have three loam texture classes, a loam, 
a sandy loam and a silt loam. Now I want you to notice that loam is a mixture of sand and silt and clay. It's not a texture, uh, a size of its own. It is a mixture of sand, silt, and clay uh, particles, and it's a specific mixture. We have two sand texture classes over in the left side, sand and loamy sand, and we have one silt texture class. So that's for a total of 12 soil texture classes. Now, how would we would determine the soil texture using this triangle and the relative proportion of the soil particles, the sands, the silts, and the clays. And so we're going to give an example of how you do that. If we have a soil that has 37% sand, 23% clay, and 40% silt. I'm going to start with the sands. I show down here that I have 37% sand, and the sand is on this bottom axis. Then in order to determine the percentage of sand and show it on my triangle, I have to make it parallel to this 0% sand line. So I'm going to draw a line from 37% sand through the triangle parallel to that 0 or the sand axis, 37% sand. I always do clay next because it the 0 clay is the bottom. And I've got 23% clay, so I'll come up to 23% and draw a line. You'll notice that these two lines cross. They intersect in this category of the loam soils. To check myself, I always draw, draw the silt line in, and I want it to intersect. If it doesn't intersect, then that means I did something wrong. So 40% silt there. I draw the line down for 40% silt. And there you see all three of the lines intersect in this category of loam. So what is the texture class? Well, the texture class is a loam. We took 37% sand, 23% clay, 40% silt. We put those on our graph. And a triangle graph is a little weird for you, so learning how to use that is an important thing in trying to understand soil texture. Those lines intersected in the middle there in that category of loam. So loam is different from the particle sizes, sand, silt, and clay, because it's a specific mixture. Again, you'll notice though that clays and sands and silts also have their own uh, texture classes because they're dominated by either sand or silt or clay. You'll also notice that clay has the biggest category up at the top. That's because clays uh, overwhelm all the other soil properties. Uh, when you look at a, a soil that's in your hand or out on the landscape. Let's look at another soil texture in this class. If we have 42% sand, 36% clay, and 21% silt. So first we find the sand. 42%, we draw the line, we find the clay, 36%, we draw the line. They intersect in this category of clay loam. So next we'll find the silt and we'll draw its line through there. And again, we want those lines to intersect. All three lines intersect in this category uh, showing in clay loam right there. That's where the lines intersect, a clay loam. So our texture class in this case is a clay loam. That means it's got a little bit more clay than a loam does, but less clay uh, than a clay texture has. Now, the size of the particles influence the size of the spaces between the particles. Those spaces between the particles are what we call pores. And the pores get bigger as the sand content increases. So when you move from 10% to 90% or 100% sand, because those are the biggest particles, the spaces between the particles get bigger. 
but the total pore space gets bigger as you go up even though the clays are the super tiniest particles so the spaces between them are super tiny because there are millions more spaces overall clays tend to have more pore space than sands have but do bigger pores equal more pores well what did i tell you that because there's so many super tiny pores in the clay the little bitty pores have more total pores even though the spaces between the pores are not bigger so why is pore size important to us well pore size influences water and how it interacts with the soil particles so water can move faster through the big pores uh, like sands have and it moves slower through the tiny pores like we have in the clays and also those tiny pores because there's so many of them and they have so much pore space hold a lot of total water the big pores don't hold a lot of a lot of total water because it flows out of them and then a mix of pore sizes like we have in the loams and the silt loams and the clay loams those are the ones that hold the most water that plants can get and when we're thinking about growing plants in soil that becomes very important so let's review soil texture is the relative proportion of sand silt and clay that we demonstrate with this texture triangle and then the sand silt and clay themselves are the particle sizes sands the larger ones that are gritty silts the intermediate sized ones that are smooth like powdered sugar or baby powder and the clays the super tiny ones that make a soil moldable and plastic uh, texture then let's go back to our first slide and think about it what is soil texture well we've defined that relative proportion of sand silt and clay what is sand those are the big gritty particles silt the middle-sized smooth particles clay the tiny particles that are plastic and moldable and a loam is that specific mixture of sand silt and clay that ends up right in the middle uh, of our texture triangle and then what's color got to do with soils you again you may have heard of a red clay but if you think back to that texture triangle color wasn't anywhere on that uh, triangle so color doesn't have anything to do with soil texture clays can be any color then what does organic matter have to do with it well we go back to our definition of soil texture relative proportion of sand silt and clay organic matter is not on there anywhere and so organic matter also doesn't have anything to do with soil texture well that's your overview your introduction to soil texture have a great day